Hello, my name is Aiden, and welcome to the first in what may or may not be a series of tutorials on Toon Boom, the animation software. Now, I want to preface this with the fact that I am definitely not an expert on Toon Boom, or even that good at it. I'm fairly new. However, I have noticed looking around online that there are very few um, tutorials on Toon Boom in general, and especially on the new update that came out a few months ago, um, and it actually changed the software fairly significantly. Um, and what I've noticed from trying to learn other kinds of software, and this one in fact, um, is the more tutorials there are from different viewpoints especially, uh, the better. So I thought I would try my hand at it. Additionally, uh, you know, they say the best way to learn is by teaching other people, so it's a win-win. Um, so I'm going to be starting with, well, yeah, I'm going to be starting with uh, Toon Boom Harmony Essentials, which is the lowest of the three tiers um, that they now have. It's, it's, there are a few features that the other two have that this one doesn't, but it can do most everything that you're going to want to do, especially early on, um, and it's just a great piece of software. So, this tutorial is going to be mostly aimed at beginners, um, and if I do end up doing more in the future, I will progress from there uh, and get more complicated. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right. So over here you can see my audio recording going on here. Um, so I'm just going to open up Toon Boom right here. Toon Boom Harmony Essentials Stage. Now while that's opening up, um, we're just gonna do the first step here, which is always, you have to remember to do this before opening any project in Toon Boom. You just go here, um, look into this dark void, and just, you know, remember and contemplate uh, the darkness that envelops your soul and everything around you, um, and only then will you be complete. Alright, I've done that. That's step one. So, back in here, when you open up Toon Boom Harmony Essentials, uh, or any version of Toon Boom Harmony, this is the first scene you're, the, uh, first window you're gonna see. Uh, it's pretty standard, just the creating a scene window. So I'm just going to create a new scene here. Uh, the first time you open this up, this should probably all be just about right. Um, you probably don't need to change any of this. So I'm just going to create this scene called New Scene. Alright, so here we are. Um, this may look very daunting at first. Um, there's a lot going on here, but I'm just going to walk through the basic parts that you need to know uh, to just make a basic animation. So, this area right here is the actual stage. This is the area that you will be drawing on, the area that you will be moving everything around in. And if you see here when I zoom out, this little box here is the screen, basically. Uh, so when you export the animation, this area will be what people will see. So, now let's move on to basic tools over here. You have a couple selection tools. I'll get more in depth into these later on, but basically these are the two drawing tools, the paintbrush and the uh, pencil. You got text, eraser, fill bucket, paint bucket, um, line, and various other shapes. This is the eyedropper, lets you, or color picker kind of thing. This is just to, you know, pan around. And then these are, uh, some more complicated animation tools that I'm not going to get into right now, but I hopefully will in the future. Um, so yeah, I'm, before we get started here, I'm just going to mention the reason I've been saying I'm not sure if I'm going to keep doing this is just because I don't know if there's really demand for it. Um, so if you do want this to continue, make sure to let me know. Just, you know, leave a comment, leave a like, anything like that. Um, I just honestly don't know if people actually want this kind of thing. Um, 
yeah. So, those are the tools. Now we're just going to move on down here to the timeline. This is the timeline right here. So each of these little squares here is one frame. Um, basically that comes from uh, one, like it, with traditional animation uh, with pencil and paper, this would be one page of paper. So as we go on here, it'll go through 24 of these frames per second, and we can create an illusion of movement. Uh, like some kind of magic wizard. So you can see right here I have uh, 60 frames to work with. I can always expand that, but that will be more than enough uh, for right now. That's going to be a little over uh, two seconds because my frame rate is 24 frames per second. So then right here we have our first layer. It's just called drawing. Um, I can draw anything I want on here. Um, the reason that looked a little bit uh, like there are these little holes through it is just because, um, uh, you know, you just sort of lose a little bit of detail in this viewing mode um, when you're zoomed out. So don't worry about that. It's actually fine. Um, just to make that a little bit easier to see, I'm going to bump the size of the brush up to 20. Uh, yeah, that should be good. And I'll talk more about the tool properties later. So you can see here, I can just, you know, draw a little circle. And everyone's having a great time just drawing cool stuff in the stage. But I hear you asking, how do we make stuff move, you stupid, dumb idiot? I thought this was supposed to be an animation software, not a glorified... Microsoft Paint. I'm getting to it. God. All right. So I'm just going to start off with a basic animation of a little circle, you know, falling and hitting the ground and bouncing. Because that seems to be what every single animation tutorial starts with. I don't know why, but it seems to work. I. I don't know where that came from, but I like it a lot. So if you see here, I can draw this little circle, I'll call him Gerald, uh, because I don't know, that seems fitting. And then when I go on to the next frame, he's gone. But what you see here, if you look really closely here, this little gray rectangle is called a drawing. Um, so this is drawing one and I can extend it out or I can make a new one right afterwards. Um, if I click on this little button here, that will create the onion skin, which basically means you can see a faint image of the previous and next drawings. So if I go in here and say, oops, um, and draw Gerald again, but in a slightly different position, and then I go back and forth between these two frames. Oh man, he's moving. Um, so I'm just gonna, I might speed this part up, but I'm just gonna go in and do a few frames of Gerald just falling and bouncing. So here we go. I'm just gonna draw him falling a little bit faster each time. He's gonna stretch out because this is how gravity works, apparently. And then, it's going real fast. And then right here, he's gonna flatten out. And then bounce up this way. And at the peak, he's gonna be right there. He seems to have gotten significantly smaller, and that's because I didn't plan this out or anything. I'm just drawing it on the go, and that's not really the right way to do it if you're trying to make an actual animation, because stuff like this happens where he's changed size completely, but, you know, it's good enough for what we're doing. So he's just going to bounce along here, and 
He's bouncing into the distance. That's what I've decided. Uh, so just don't worry about that. So now he's just... Oops. Now he's just rolling off into the distance. I have accidentally created foreshortening, and we're just not going to worry about that. So now, when I hit the play button right up here, um, these you can move all these panels around, so some stuff might be in slightly different positions on your screen. Uh, I can't quite remember what the default orientation is, because I think I moved some stuff around, but I believe this is where it should be. So if I press this little play button right here, I'm actually just going to restrict it to those 19 frames uh, so that we don't just have all this empty space here. And when I hit play, you can see, oh man, something amazing just happened. We have our good friend Gerald uh, falling from the sky and bouncing off into the distance in an absurdly fast manner. Um, good job, everyone. We did it. Happy Thanksgiving. And in fact, we can just go in here to any frame uh, and we can change it if we want. So we can just put in a little bit of subliminal messaging here. Uh, let's see, I can uh, just say, you know, be sure, oops, be Seuss, be sure to drink your oval. Uh, yeah, so now anyone who watches this uh, will not only see the thrilling exploits of our good friend Gerald the Bouncy Ball uh, falling and bouncing along, uh, they will also, um, without even noticing it, have a little bit of hint, uh, hint in their mind from just that little flash um, that they should be drinking their Ovaltine um, because it's apparently the... 1950s or something um so there we have it that was that was a good time i hope you had a good time because i'm sure i did and we've made a just a glorious motion picture right here i'm going to submit it to sundance we'll see what happens i'll let you know in the next video which there hopefully will be one and in addition to letting you know whether or not this has gotten into Sundance, which I'm sure it will, I will also get more in-depth on the tools and maybe a little bit more on the timeline as well, because we've really just scratched the surface. Um, if you're feeling like Toon Boom is just too complicated, don't feel that way, because it looks like it but it's really not too hard once you get into it. At this point, I am rambling, and I'm going to stop recording so that you don't have to listen to this anymore. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you would like to see more of these, go ahead and leave a like or a comment. Um, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this, as well as some, uh, you know, speed drawings, animations, that kind of thing, and I will see you in the next video. No. Go away, I need my beauty sleep.